What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. Hey guys, and welcome back to this tutorial on my channel. Today I'm going to show you my basic typo, which I often use in edits. Just for you to know, I'm not going to show you anything very advanced. I'm just showing you a very basic typo, which can be applied very fast. What you want to do first, basically, when you have your audio, you can press L twice to open the waveform. You can also go in here and open the audio and open the waveform thing. And then you can see the same, but double L is way faster, right? If you right click on your comp, you need to deactivate this. Like there shouldn't be this thing right here, rectified audio waveforms. Because if you have it on, it looks like this and you cannot really see what's going on, right? So don't have this on and it looks like this. What you want to do then is you want to go through the audio, you want to listen to it and find out where the uh, words are which you want to put typo on, right? So I did this in advance because I knew we were going to do this and this would just waste time. So let's just get right into it. So we have our things marked here. You can place markers with the symbol here. If I do this, if you double click on it, you can change the name and stuff like that, but it's not necessary right now. So. What we have here is what's poppin brand new whip just hopped in. So we have every word marked basically. We can listen to it again just so you see that everything is right. What's poppin brand new whip just hopped in. Okay. So what do you want to do if you want to create a text? You want to create a text, right? So you press here on new and go to text or you can just go here and click it on to here, right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to write the text which we want to have here. So we want to have what's here. This text is a little bit too big. So we press double left click on this layer in order to uh, select it all. And then on, this, on the right side here, we have the character layer and we can change the size. So we're gonna use maybe 45. So now we've got this text and we can also already cut it by pressing uh, control shift and D, we can cut it and delete it just like that. So now the text just starts here. Problem now is that it's not really centered. If we go to a line and center it now, you can see, okay, this probably isn't centered. Like this is a little bit too far. Reason for this is the anchor point, which for some reason, for some people might be a little bit distorted. Just as you can see, this this little thing here is the anchor point, and this is the tool for the anchor point right here. So with this, we can easily drag this around. Basically, what's important about this thing is that an animation tool like scaling it is dependent on this like if we scale it it will scale to this anchor point and we want it to be in the middle obviously so we could now take the time to actually put this into the middle right here but this doesn't really make sense so what we're going to do is we press ctrl and double left click on the symbol and it automatically puts it in the middle of the text right so this is a very easy thing you can do here if you look at my animation or my text things, you can see that all my uh, texts mostly start or even end sometimes with some little flickering. This just makes it more uh, pleasing for the eye. Like if we could just scale it right now, but that would be not as pleasing. So we're going to start with basic animation of the color or like a little flicker. And the way I do it is I open up the text layer and I have this text thing here. And to the right, we have the animate and this little button. So you can press this little button and open all those animation things. You can animate everything here, as you can see, from position to scale, skew, rotation, opacity, and, and so on. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the fill color RGB option. If we open this up, we can see that the text turns red. This is because if we look to the lower left right here, we can see that the fill color is set to red. For sure, we can do it with the red and white flicker, but we're not going to do that right now. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a color like this, right? We don't want to use black because that's a little bit too dark. In my opinion, we're going to use a very dark grayish tone, just like this. And then we can press this little stopwatch next to it in order to create a keyframe so we can animate it, right? So we're going to do this and then this little uh, thing pops up there, this little symbol, this is a keyframe. And if we now go one frame to the right, here you can see the clip is moving, obviously. So what we're going to do now is change the color to white, to the end color, right? So now it looks like this. It just basically turns to white. Since this is a little bit too fast, we're going to do the same again. So we're just going to left click and drag over these to select them. Press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V 
to actually paste. Now it looks like this. You can see a little flicker. For sure you can decide on your own how long this you want this flicker to be. You can copy this again and then it's just flickering all over the place. But we're going to use those four. That's mostly what I'm using when doing typo. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to apply blur to it or maybe there's like a path that you guys have but we can try it out easily. So we have our color animated right here and if we press on this to activate the blur in the comp and then activate the blur on the layer we can see that something weird happens. So if we go through it this isn't white anymore like this is all just the same color and it's kind of getting weird and it doesn't look good because now it's just slow and there isn't really a flicker right? So the motion blur actually like is blocking us from achieving good quality in this because it basically it mixes the colors in order to look more satisfying or something. But this doesn't really apply to this one so we just leave the motion blur so we have this flicker. Because we need the motion blur later on when scaling or doing other animation we have to pre-compose. For that we can easily just right click and click on pre-compose. And now we choose this option, you can decide on if you want to have that box. This just basically trims the comp to the size of the layer. We can do this since we've cut it already. And now it looks like this. Now if you can see, if we activate blur in the comp and blur in the layer, you can see that inside the pre-comp nothing is changing. So we still have the flicker. And now we can work with motion blur. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So because it's basic, as I've already said, we're going to use mostly scale for the operations we wanted to do, right? So press S to open the scale menu and you can see here that we have the scale option. Same applies here. If we click the stopwatch, we can animate it. So now if you drag these values, you can see, okay, amazing, right? So you shouldn't overdo it because if you can see the quality shrinks. We have the preview on full and you can see that the quality kind of looks weird. Also don't do too much. Well, anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to find a value. You can also press this little button if you want to animate those on their own. If you want to do squeezing things like this, but we will do it easier, but maybe not as detailed later on. Okay, well, so click this again, just so we can do both at the same time. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use my favorite value, 300. It looks like this, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the end of the clip, which is around here, because here... Is the start of the next word right so what we're going to do is we're going to put this on 100 to have it in its original scale now it looks like this you can see that this kind of isn't the thing that we want to achieve it looks like the watts is just going in here and then is it really is here at this point but we don't want this so what we're going to do is we're going to left click and drag over the keyframes and press f9 this is the easy ease option and with that being done we can go into the graph editor which is right here if we open this up we're already in the right place but for some of you it might we might be right here right if you click on this little symbol here we can quickly change from the speed graph in which we're currently in to the value graph which looks like this now we can see the movement a little bit better you can see like this is just a basic graph and if there's a higher rise or a higher decrease you can see that the animation is going to be faster right so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this all over to the left and this all over to the bottom just like this around okay so you can see that the decrease at the start is like very huge and then it's just not very much changing right so now it looks like this and this is exactly what we want it to be because now you can see with this flicker the animation is fast overall and this is what we want to achieve right so basically now our animation is somewhat done we could normally use shakes meanwhile to adjust the uh, movement stuff like that but this is too much information right now we're not going to do that right now but since we're not done yet there's also a thing a few things that you can add right so first of all if you go to the composition settings up here composition composition settings you can go to advanced and change your blur Obviously, the, uh, the shutter phase will change things. So if we put this on, for example, on minus 120, it will look different of what it will look with minus 180, okay? We can put this on minus 120 for now. You can choose what you like. Now it looks like this. See? You can decide on what you like more. Let's just stick with this right now. So since the clip is ending here, we're gonna just delete this. 
So now the clip just ends, right? So what we want to do is now we want to have an end animation. And there's a pretty handy effect which we can use right here. And this effect is called warp. So you have some presets right here, but we're just going to use the normal warp option of After Effects. So if you put it on, it looks weird. This is due to the bend being set to 50. If we set this on zero, the text is just back, right? So if you click on the warp style right here, there are lots of options. But what we're going to use right now is the squeeze option. So we check this and if, you, if we change the bend right now, you will see that it squeezes the text in two directions, right? So what we're going to do is put this on zero for now and go to the start of the clip or wherever you want to start the animation. I usually just go to the start of the clip and animate it to the end of the clip. So now we want to keyframe the bend, so click the stopwatch and press O to go to the end of the clip. With the key on your keyboard I you can go to the start and with the key O you can go to the end of the clip. So now if you pre if you go to the bend and put it on like minus 100 you can see that it's going, it's being squeezed very hard, you can see. And now it looks like this. You can see that this looks kind of weird. And this is not the thing which we really want. We want to have a graph right here as well. So we're going to do the same. We're going to left click and drag, select them all, press F9 to easy ease and open the graph editor. As soon as we're here, we're not going to do it to the left because we don't want it to be fast in the beginning. We don't want text to be squeezed in the beginning. We want the text to be squeezed in the end. So we're going to do the opposite way, just like this, and put this up. We want to use sharp graphs for this kind of typo. So it looks like this now. As you can see, we have a sharp movement in and the sharp movement out. So this is a very basic movement of text, right? So for now, we will keep this, right? I just want to mention that you can obviously put more detail into this and you can obviously uh, use more effects like S underline dissolve. Blur is a cool option if you put this actually on zero and this on one and then put the blur on like 25, you can see that it looks like this, which is also a cool effect. And if you animate it and do the same graphing as we did before, you can see that this effect looks quite decent. Just so you know, you can use a lot of effects which actually improve the quality of this effect. And this is all very fast and you don't really have to do that much to achieve a basic but yet good looking effect. Right? So let's just go on with the next. We are lazy so we're just gonna copy this. What you can do is you can also do this. Cut it here. Cut it here. Name it brand. Cut it here, name it new, cut it here, name it whip, cut it here, name it just, and so on, right? So you can just go on with this, right? So this is basically a very easy thing you can do. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to do the same things right now as we've done before. So we have the animation right here. We just have to get our keyframes to the start of the clip. So we have this little flickering again. And obviously we have to rename this to Poppin. If you want to rename something or change the tags, just double click on the layer and it will select everything and then just type whatever you want. In my case, it's Poppin. So now we have this little animation. As you can see, this already looks kind of decent. But since we're here in an editing tutorial, we're going to do everything the same. Pre-compose, activate the blur, Go to the start of the clip by pressing I, the save in between so you don't uh, for, uh, lose anything if After Effects crashes. And you can basically just see that it is a very easy thing to do, right? What we're going to do now is apply the same things. This time, since we're going with a warp out, we can either just scale in again, but this time we're going to use the warp effect and put this on 100 this time, because here we went on like minus 100. So we're going to go with 100 at the start right now and then go to the end of the clip and put it on zero. If we animate this right now and do the sharp graph as we're used to, we will see that it looks like this. 
What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. This looks already quite decent. So you can see this is a very basic type and you can choose the effect you like, right? You can com combine it with shakes, you can combine it with everything, and you can just play around with the scaling, even the rotation, or the warp effect, or like or like different kind of blurs like the S underline, the solve blur, right? So all those effects and many more come in handy for this effect to actually work. And there's a lot you can actually do with this, right? So my advice for now will be just for you to play around with this and find something you like. You can also like do the scaling from, obviously you can do it from big to small, but you can also do it from small to big, right? So there's a lot of things that you can actually do. And as I said, I would just advise you to play around with this and if you do it correctly, then uh, this is just a very easy, quick typer. I know this video went longer as I've probably expected myself, but it's just because I'm like trying to explain a lot of things. I hope uh, I was able to help you with this. So if you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Activate the bell if you want to get notified if I ever post some new tutorials. And if you want, you can write some ideas for newer tutorials into the comments and I'll see if I can work on this. That being said, thanks for watching and we'll see us in the next video.